and I call on Claire Hockey to open the debate. Ms Hockey, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It is a great honour to open this debate three days into this year's Eating Disorders Awareness Week, which runs until the 4th of March. Um, at this point in, in proceedings, I was about to ask members to welcome um, the visitors to the gallery today, but unfortunately, uh, the weather has, has beaten us. Um, and, uh, but I would like to mention the Eating Disorder Charity Beat and the Scottish Eating Disorders Interest Group, who both helped uh, greatly in the preparation for this debate. Before I start, I would refer members to my entry in the Register of Members' Interests. I'm a registered mental health nurse and hold an honorary contract with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Presiding officer, most people will be aware of anorexia, bulimia and binge eating disorder. However, they may not actually be aware that such eating disorders are actually serious mental illnesses. These are conditions which are diagnosed according to a list of the expected behavioural, psychological and physical symptoms, but they are sadly often misunderstood as merely being diets gone wrong or phases. Evidence shows that over the last three or four decades, instances of eating disorders have increased to such an extent that BEAT estimate that approximately 1.25 million people live with one in the UK. The most re recent figures for Scotland show that in 20, uh, 2015 to 2016, a total of 726 people were treated in hospital for an eating disorder, which represents a 66% increase for the corresponding figures a decade earlier. The rise, however, doesn't necessarily have to be viewed as an, a negative, and nor may it actually indicate a rise in suffering. It could instead point to an increased awareness on the part of healthcare professionals and improved access to treatment which is a mental health nurse of over 30 years, is the assertion that I would agree with. Whilst many people have been diagnosed and are receiving treatment, many more remain undiagnosed and at risk. The risk is not of not treating any mental illness can be incredibly dangerous. However, for eating disorders, this is even more true. Eating disorders are responsible for more loss of life than any other form of psychological illness, with anorexia nervosa having the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. Presiding officer, even when eating disorders are not fatal, they can still lead to severe long-term physical health consequences, such as organ damage, fertility issues, and can increase the risk of heart problems and type 2 diabetes. The deniability, secrecy and stigma associated with eating disorders will stop many seeking help and prevent others from taking responsibility to help a sufferer. The latest available figures for Scotland, however, are only the tip of the iceberg, as most people are treated within community outpatient settings and have no need or desire to visit a hospital. Presiding officers, the systems which currently operate in Scotland and England are different and should not be directly compared. However, for information's sake, the Scottish Government has set a target that all patients, no matter their age, should not have to wait longer than 18 weeks from referral to the start of treatment for a mental health condition, including that of eating disorders. Within my own constituency, the average time to refer an adult to appropriate services is actually within 15 days. In fact, I checked myself yesterday. Whilst urgent cases are seen within the day much quicker than the standard target, and whilst I appreciate this is not the case everywhere, there is good practice to be found across the country. In England, for under 19s only, the target referral time for non-urgent eating disorders cases is four weeks, and the urgent case is seven days. Scotland is already doing tremendous things in tackling mental illness with the groundbreaking Mental Health Strategy 2017 to 2027, and I have full trust in our Mental Health Minister. Nonetheless, we can always look to see how we can improve things, and it may be the case that the successes in my constituency could be looked at being replicated Scotland-wide. Presiding Officer, when preparing for today's debate, I had the pleasure of hearing about BEAT's Ambassador Programme from their Senior National Officer, Sarah Preston. Beats ambassadors all have lived experience of eating disorders and through their own knowledge and expertise they are helping others who are going through similar situations. One of these people was Val Valerie Connor from Glasgow who was to be with us in the gallery today. Valerie was, uh, has the rare experience of previously having suffered from anorexia nervosa and currently now from bulimia. She spoke bravely of her own difficult and challenging battles and of the real positives of her experience is that the help she has, and one of the real positives of her experience is the, through the help she has received through peer support groups. Many years ago, after growing impatient and frustrated with being unable to access services, she began to meet up with others in Glasgow who created their own support service to assist one another through their journeys to recovery. 
Such groups like the Glasgow Eating Disorder Support Group are easily found online. So I hope that from today's coverage, others will know that they can look on the internet to find help from others in similar situations. Another great example of online support is through the tremendous website managed by Eva Musby, anorexiafamily.com. Eva's daughter fell ill around 10 years ago and she now devotes a substantial portion of her time helping other parents and sufferers themselves. Her website, and indeed the book she's written, is a great resource for those looking for further help. From a parent's perspective, her website assists with general information and practical advice, as well as offering the companionship of someone who knows what it's like to support a child with an eating disorder, also while providing hope and confidence. And I can't thank Eva and Valerie enough for their assistance in preparing for today's debate, and I hope they will be encouraged by what they've heard thus far. Presiding officer, before I close my speech, I wish to pay tribute to former MSP and now councillor for Stonehaven and Lord Deeside, Dennis Robertson. Dennis was supposed to be here for today's debate, however, sadly, due to the weather, he's been unable to attend. Dennis was the main driver behind me lodging today's motion for debate due to bravely sharing his own harrowing experiences. Nearly seven years ago to the day, 25th of February 2011 to be exact, Dennis lost his daughter Caroline to anorexia after she suffered from the illness for over five years. Dennis, in a heartfelt speech marking Eating Disorders Awareness Week two years ago, recalled the death of his beloved daughter, and he said, and I quote, I felt the pain, the pain then, and I feel the pain now, but the pain that I feel now is perhaps slightly different. It is not just grief. I miss Caroline very much, as do Anne and Caroline's twin sister, Fiona. Of course we miss her but we must continue to try to establish a pathway so that other people do not have to go through the pain and anguish that we've gone through. I'm incredibly sorry that Dennis is no longer an MSP to continue this campaign at Parliament. However, I wish to reassure him that there are others like myself who will continue to fight the fight for him. Thank you very much.